we are being sponsored by UPND. And that opposition party becomes the new Don government. And the new Don government starts out with the bank. Head of states creates a new ministry, economy and environment. We are hitting all the right environmental knots. He attends COP27, determinant of the future of the planet in terms of climate change. Now we see a bit of compromise. So is it true that when people come into power, they suddenly change? Hello world, from whichever time zone you're catching me from, my name is MD90. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification to all so you do not miss the uploads that come up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, when you talk about environmental issues uh, related to Zambia, there's one name that comes up easily, Miju Ecocare. And then um, a very common question is, what does Miju do? What does Miju stand for? So I have uh, the executive director with me. We we're trying to find out what Miju means. Uh, this is Mr. Tim Mosley Piri. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me, David. So we'll get right into the bone of contention here. What does Mizu mean? Mizu is a Chewa word. Okay. Yeah, and Mizu means roots, uh, plural. Mizu Echo Care. The reason why we named ourselves Mizu Echo Care is because we are rooted in taking care of the environment, ecosystems. So hence the Echo Care. Mm -hmm. If you look at our logo, you will notice we have Mother Earth, yes. then hands that are holding Mother Earth, then you have a tree that's rooted or embedded into the planet. Yes. So literally it's about being rooted, having the passion to take care of planet Earth. That's what Mizu Echo Care is all about and means. How, how did um, Mizu come about? Mizu came about because as an individual, you know, yes. my background is environmental education. Yes. Uh, that's what I used to, to lecture. Yes. So my, my passion has always been the environment. Mm -hmm. And I really thought there was a need to get into the environmental space, mm -hmm. the NGO space, and practice everything I had learned over the years. So that's, that's going to be different from the university teaching or... Yes, because, you know, university teaching is about you being in the lecture room. Okay. Imparting knowledge, imparting skills. Mm -hmm. Then once in a while, you move out into the, the field. field. And for me, my passion was always being out in the field. Hands on, being in the field where yeah. the work is supposed to be done. Yeah. And so, just imparting the knowledge in someone and then they go and do the work on your behalf. Exactly. So... There was that need for me to be in the environment where I felt I thrived best. Yes. Um, then this vision I had intersected with my brother's vision as well. Okay. Who also graduated from ones and did uh, developmental studies and uh, sociology. Yes. So we had that intersected passion and thought we could collaborate, start an NGO and implement our vision. Yes. So Mizo Echo Care was literally meant to be a platform for mindset change. Mindset change through environmental education. Okay. For us, that was a gap we saw. If you look at the way most environmental problems are solved, yes. it's about people getting into the field and solving those problems. Mm -hmm. It's literally a hardware approach. Mm -hmm. But there isn't much emphasis on the mindset. Re-engineering the third pattern. Oh. Exactly. Mm -hmm. which, which is the real cause of all environmental problems. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it from a balanced point of view, if you only deal with the hardware aspects on the ground, 
you will solve those problems. You are remedying the symptoms, forgetting the exactly. Mm -hmm. You you need to remedy the the actual problem, which is a flaw in the way people perceive the environment, the world. Unless that perception is set right, mm -hmm. they'll go back and repeat that same problem. So the solution has to be twofold. You deal with the hardware aspects, reduction of deforestation, reduction of pollution, solving hunger, stopping poaching. Those are fine, but you're dealing with the hardware part. Yes. If the mindset is not changed, they'll go back to polluting, cutting down trees, poaching. So you, you need it's to work on the mindset. Cycle. Yes. If you don't deal with the mindset, you solve half the problem. Mm -hmm. Hence our emphasis on, on mindset change. Apart from that, mm -hmm. another important thing we want it to be is a platform mm -hmm. where people can have an outlet to say what they feel about the environment, to complain, to call for help. Yes. And half the work we do actually involves people getting in touch with us and saying, there's this problem here. Can you tell this story? Or can you come and help solve this problem? Mm -hmm. So being a platform where people can run to for help, a platform where people feel they can release information to the public was definitely part of that original vision we, we had. And I think so far we are happy with the response we've gotten from from people in that aspect. So eventually, uh, one of um, the um, information that you put out mm -hmm. was related to um, Forest 27. And uh, there's been a debate about Forest 27. Are environmentalists in general just objecting to development? Or there is a core reason why Forest 27 should be uh, an eye opener to everyone that, uh, that is uh, living in Osaka or in Jedu in Zambia. Why Forest 27? The reason why we were interested in Forest 27 is because it's the last forest remaining in Losaka district. So we used to have Forest 26 and Forest 27 as, as the last two. Then Forest 26 was degazetted. Half of it became the Osaka National Park. And we don't complain about that because the ecosystem aspect has been preserved through the national park. So that was a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. The other half became the MEFRES project, which leads to degradation. Yes. So that kind of development we are against. A development that degrades an important ecosystem that had a specific ecological function for the city of Lusaka. Lusaka. Remember, the original de design for Lusaka city was that it should be a, a garden city. It's, it's a city meant to flourish by bringing out its environmental dreams. So the moment you take away the environmental aspect, trees, forests, plants, you are going against the original concept upon which the city was, was, designed. was founded. Yes. Then you have Forest 27, which was also degazetted, portions of it. Uh, bit by bit, they were being degazetted until you remained with less than half. But this is a recharge zone for the entire city. Recharge zone is an area where water enters the ground to get into the underground water system okay. that you need as a city because not all your water is going to come through the council or from Kafue River. Mm -hmm. A huge number of people depend on water that comes from the underground through boreholes. Mm -hmm. That water goes down through specific points. It's not every point of the surface that's going to let water into the underground. Mm -hmm. So that's a recharge zone. That's one of the reasons why that place was gazetted into a forest so that it's protected as an entry point for water okay. into the underground. So when you begin to start developing it, you remove the trees and replace them with concrete, you are defeating the purpose of having that ecosystem as a, a recharge zone. It's also the source for the Chalimbana River. Okay. So again, if you want 
the Chalimbana River to remain healthy and continue flowing, you will sustain the source of that river. Mm -hmm. You will sustain the areas around that source so that you do not degrade it. But the moment you start developing the area, you degrade the ecosystem. The quality reduces. That means the ability of water to be collected into the stream reduces. And everyone else downstream that's supposed to benefit from that river and, and has benefited from it for hundreds of years suddenly begins to lose that benefit. So why should the majority of the people lose a benefit? Because a few people feel it's within their right and power to own personalized plots in the area. That, that is not fair, it's not just. When you look at the people that got the plots in Forest 27, the majority of them are powerful, well-to-do individuals. Okay. So yes, there, were a, there was a certain section that was put out for the average Zambian, but that was just to make sure people don't complain. Yes. Behind the original idea was for powerful people to have land because okay. land was running out in Osaka. The truth is Zambia doesn't have a shortage of land. Mm -hmm. Plots could have easily been allocated in Shimabala, in Silverest area, heading towards Chongwe. But we still have a lot of land. 752,614 square kilometers of land is a lot of land for a population of between 20 to 21 million people. Mm -hmm. Zambia does not have a shortage of land. That's a, a false claim. So that can be used as a justification for... No. Then the, the argument comes in to say, all these projects go through Zema. Uh, so uh, what is the role of Zema for them to green light such a project when they understand the consequences of such? Zema is the mother body mandated with protecting all environmental assets we have. Then you have other bodies like WOMA, then you have departments like forest, forestry department. Okay. Each, each one of those has a role to play, yes. has a mandate to protect the environment and nature in Zambia. Yes. But the history of the way things have been done in our country is such that when technocrats, those civil servants in government, are trying to do their job, they will not do that job freely. And, and that's been the challenge, because the question we've all asked is, what does Zema say? What does Forest, what does forest Department say? What does WOMA say about this water resource? Yes. And you will notice in the previous regime, mm -hmm. all those departments were quiet the time we were raising the issue of Forest 27 yes. being protected. Yes. And they were quiet because the people involved in that particular issue were their superiors. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to get to a point where these technocrats, these bodies mandated to protect the environment, are given free reign to make the final decision in the best interest of nature. Because mm -hmm. their responsibility is to protect these assets that are owned by Zambians, mm -hmm. government is the people. They work for the people. So they're protecting resources for the Zambian people. The allegiance of any government department, mm -hmm. any agency, is to the people mm -hmm. first, yes. to the environment first, not to the government or the appointing authority. Mm -hmm. But human nature being what it is, people will fear to displease their appointing authority because that has implications on their well-being. They say, you can don't bite the hand that feeds you, in as much as they Exactly. <laughs> okay, uh, so where we stand at the moment, the uh, issue of Forest 27, where is it at? Is there any progress or are we still at square one? When the New Dawn government came into power, yes, uh, they were very swift. One of the first things they did was to visit that particular area uh, 
two, three ministers visited and stopped the development okay. in Forest 27. Mm -hmm. That stopping of the development, however, has been on paper. Okay, because on the ground, even now as we speak, speak. war fences and houses are still coming up. So there are two sides to this. There is what is being said publicly, yes, and what's, happening and what's actually happening on the ground. I'll give you my personal perspective on the New Dawn government. When the New Dawn government was in the opposition, they were very clear about what the environmental position was. When we released the Forest 27 documentary, the majority of the political platforms, social media platforms that shared that video were actually UPND platforms. The current government. And we have the current minister of local government in parliament declaring we will demolish those houses when we get into power. Yes. So their, their position on the environment That's was clear. very, very clear. We received a lot of opposition and persecution from the then government because we were deemed anti-development. And actually a good number of people were saying we are being sponsored by UPND because their environmental agenda intersected with what the environmental NGOs we are also pushing for. Fast forward to the present situation, the that opposition party becomes the new Dawn government. Yes. And the new Dawn government starts out with the buy. The head of states creates a new ministry that's called Green Economy and Environment. As environmentalists, we were cheering. The first, amongst the first trips he makes is to New York, UN General Assembly and he pushes his agenda as the Republican president, HH, mm -hmm. pushes the agenda for a green economy, environmental sustainability. We are hitting all the right environmental knots. Mm -hmm. He attends COP27, another huge determinant of the future of the planet in terms of climate change solutions yes. and environmental sustainability. Again, we hit all the right knots. Our nationally determined contributions are right on point. So that the message we're giving out to the world is that the environment matters to it's us. Priority. So the first things they're doing as a new government match what they used to say when they were in opposition. Mm -hmm. But the challenges come in, for those of us that are watching the whole process from the yeah. time they were in the opposition to now in power, Yes. Now we see a bit of compromise. Okay. Because now the development in Forest 27 is not being stopped. The Minister of Land, Honorable Nchema, is now talking about a study that has to be done. And there is need for 500,000 pounds to conduct a study, a study to discover what. what? What's the to, to, to find what, mm -hmm. what information, what new information, I groundbreaking mean, information will come up that Forestry Department, WWF, Ministry of Local Government, Ministry of Lands, WOMA, Lucy, the NGO, what, what new data do you want to find that, that, that is not already documented? Mm -hmm. Lusaka City Kando. Council has a lot of data. Mm -hmm. What new information do we honestly want to find that we do not already know? Mm -hmm. My personal opinion is there is a compromise. We are not standing on the original agenda which is hard to protect the environment. Okay. The same thing goes with other areas like Kasanka National Park. Yes. Kasanka National Park is a national park that has an investor coming in and beginning an agricultural project in the park's GMA, okay, game management area. Mm -hmm. They begin these developmental activities without getting any permission. Fast forward to now, Zema goes in and 
gives them an opportunity to have a public hearing. Okay. In my personal opinion, they should have never had the privilege of being given a public hearing because mm -hmm. they have already started the but project without, without permission. Without okay? Mm -hmm. So, those people should have been given no opportunity to continue developing. The development should have simply been cancelled. But they were left, they were let off the hook. A public hearing was given. The announcement was that feedback from that hearing would be given in two weeks. Mm. It's been months now. We, we do not know what the feedback from that hearing is. is. That's compromise to me. When you have an environmental agenda, your agenda represents royalty to the environment, it represents commitment to your people yes. that you will protect the natural resources on their behalf. Yes. That commitment, that vision, that agenda does not change just because you come into government. True. In fact, being in government should Give only strengthen your resolve to implement that particular vision. Yes. So it's these compromises that now make us start asking questions. So is it true that when people come into power, they suddenly change? Because mm -hmm. that's what makes politics come out like a dirty, a dirty game. game. True. Because we see people that have principles we admire Clear -cut principles. suddenly change when they are in power. There should be no change when the vision it's is great. to protect the environment. Yes. It doesn't matter whether you're in opposition or in power. Protect the environment. Got it. Protect the welfare of your people. Do not compromise because now you are in power. That, that is a contradiction. That is a sad development. And we hope the current New Dawn government will remain committed to protecting nature wherever it is under threat. We are not saying development is wrong, as we are always we accused. We are saying we want balanced development. We want sustainable development because we realize that development on its own that continues to damage the environment will leave us in trouble. We'll end up with climate change and its effects. No one is happy when we see flooding and run of water all over the place. That is because we're not balancing up the development and the protection of, of the, the environment. environment. Yes. When the soil is exposed because there are not trees, mm -hmm. you cannot hold the, the water from the rains when it begins to flow on the surface. Mm -hmm. So when we say let's balance the development between keeping some trees and developing some areas, it's because we want to prevent those negative impacts. It's the balance we want not over concentration on only development. development. Let's balance up the two. Uh, the, there's the debate that has been going on in the media uh, recently. Uh, what are the benefits of having the Victoria Falls area designated as a World Heritage Site? And what are the disadvantages if that's taken off? Okay. So when you look at, when we talk about the Victoria Falls, Mosotonia Falls, yes. Uh, we have to look at the area from, you know, a, a holistic perspective. Yes. We're, we're, we're talking about the Mosotonia National Park. Yes. In connection to the Victoria Falls. Yes. It is a World Heritage Site because the Victoria Falls, the Mosotonia Falls, mm -hmm. is one of the seven natural wonders of the world. On Earth. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you talk about natural wonders in Africa, it's the only natural wonder we have. South Africa has even been good at marketing that natural wonder. They market it as if it's Probably within yes. South Africa. They yes. market it better than Zimbabwe and Zambia. Exactly. True. So, because we have been given the privilege by God to host this natural wonder, it's important to protect that ecosystem in which uh, that natural wonder is exists. found. Yes. Hence, the reason why that area was declared a World Heritage Site. Side. Why is it under threat? It is under threat because the developmental activities that are coming into the area are now threatening that particular ecosystem. 
you even have plans to have the Batoka Dam developed in Batoka Gorge. Once you flood that gorge with water from that dam, mm -hmm. won't that compromise the quality of that ecosystem? It will. Won't that compromise the Zambezi River? It will. Will the Victoria Falls be the same? So if you compromise the status of this natural wonder, only one in Africa, mm -hmm. then the World Heritage Site, through our Heritage Commission here, mm -hmm. has the right to say, you know what? You are blessed with one of the greatest wonders in the world, mm -hmm. but you don't care to take care of it. Mm -hmm. We will remove the status of World, world Heritage Site. Because a World Heritage Site is a location that's of significance, cultural significance, Humanity natural resource significance, to not only the people of that area, to not only the people of that city, Livingston, to not only the people of Southern Province, mm -hmm. to not only the people of Zambia, Southern Africa, Africa. It's a heritage for the whole world. Human race. You are protecting it for the whole world. Yes. That's the reason why it's not just a national heritage site. Mm -hmm. It's a world heritage site. So the, the responsibility is beyond what we want as Zambians. Yes. It, it's about what the whole world wants. It's a resource that, that's meant to be protected for the entire planet, for everyone alive today. So if we compromise its quality through development, then of course its status as a world heritage site will be brought into question. And that's the reason why we are personally against the making of the Batoka Dam. Mm -hmm. Because when you talk about the Batoka Dam, you have to look at the Zambezi River as a whole. Yes. The Zambezi River as a whole is an ecosystem. This ecosystem flows through the Kaza Conservation Area, Kavango, Zambezi, Transboundary Conservation Area, mm -hmm. which is one of the largest land conservation areas in the world. It's an area that covers Zambia, Angola, Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe. Again, this area is not for one country, it's mandated to five countries to take care of it. Mm -hmm. So the wildlife that roams in this area is collectively owned. The ecosystems we protect in this area are collectively protected, not only for the five countries, for the whole world. That's the reason why it's been declared a conservation area. The Zambezi River flows through this area. It has two big dams, some of the biggest dams in the world, the Kariba for hydroelectric production mm -hmm. and the Kahorabasa in Mozambique. Mm -hmm. These two dams are already an investment enough on the Zambezi. You do not need a third Dam. Dam. Instead of trying to focus on hydroelectric power, let's remove the pressure on hydroelectric power. Let's look at solar energy. When we talk about our rural electrification authority, their mandate is to provide electricity to everyone, but hydroelectric power is expensive. Why? Because we have a very high deforestation rate. Okay. And because of that very high deforestation rate, the ecosystems that are meant to be water catchment areas for the Zambezi are being degraded. The Zambezi is not getting as much water today as it got 20, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. So why will we continue putting pressure on hydroelectric power when the amount of water we're getting into these dams is actually reducing? And that's part of the pressure for increasing the price for electricity let's look for alternatives let's look at biofuels let's look at solar energy the rural electrification authority project and mandate to provide electricity to every zambia should not just be about hydroelectric power it should also be about other forms of energy solar energy being one of them biofuels being one of them. So the emphasis on dams, dams, dams doesn't have to be there if we have the opportunity to find 
alternative energy sources. I'll emphasize this point again. Yes. The pressure on hydroelectric power is enormous because it can only be produced using water. We call it a renewable form of energy, but in reality, it is not because it depends on water continuously flowing, water that comes from the water cycle. Yes. But if we disturb the trees, that water cycle is mm. also disturbed. Yes. So it's no longer renewable unless the trees are kept intact. That and we are not keeping the trees in the intact. Because of deforestation. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, just stand by. We'll be right back on the other side. Put it on the record. 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 Put it on. So I just walked right up to you to tell you one thing. Subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe to the channel. Come on.